Good afternoon. Let us now turn into worship by praising God with our opening hymn, number 204. We gather together, number 204. Please stand. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and reasons his world to make known. The wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us, our God with us joining, whose kingdom calls all to the love which endures. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning, you, Lord, were at our side, O glory. We all do extol you, our leader triumphant, and pray that you still our defender will be. Let your congregation escape tribulation. Your name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the whole. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. When the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision clearly upon the tablets, so that one can readily read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into the flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. 
The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink? You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So it should be with you. When you have done all that you have been commanded, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. In the second reading today, we hear from... St. Paul speaking to Timothy. Now, Timothy was considered one of, one of the young bishops. He was taking over uh, a see and having to deal with all these people who were coming against him because they said, you're too young, you're too young, to, you're too young. And St. Paul is encouraging him, no, you have all the gifts you need. God is taking care of you. And so he says, you know, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. He's speaking specifically about how he ordained him as a bishop. But we can also see that the Spirit is given to us in a powerful way through confirmation as well. And he says, For God did not give us, meaning not just he and Timothy, but Christianity. God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. And so we look and we say, well, none of us here have been ordained bishop. God is still pouring out his gifts upon us. And he's given us of his spirit so that we could have his life moving within us. The, the spirit is that which unites the father and the son. And when Jesus pours out his spirit upon us, we then are united with the father. That we have this interior gift of the Lord. We can enter into the heart of Jesus, into the heart of the Father, because the Spirit has been given to us. Now, he says, stir this uh, fan into flame the gift that God has given you, the gift of the Spirit, to fan into flame. Because sometimes, even though the Spirit is given to us, sometimes it just lays dormant in our lives. Nobody's ever experienced that before, right? We send our kids, you know, there's that joke, right, where the... Um, the pastor is struggling because he has bats in his belfry and they try getting all sorts of exterminators and all sorts of people to come in. Finally, the bishop says, I'll take care of this. So the bishop comes and goes up and then he walks out and he's not going to have any problems with bats. And he says, Why? What's happened? I just confirmed them. They're never coming back to church. <laughs> so we see this, right? 
we see this, that we pour out, we, we allow God to pour out His Spirit upon us in, in the sacraments, specifically in confirmation, and then what happens? Those kids, they disappear. We never see them again. It's a sad state of affairs. So the Spirit is given to us, but we have to then stir the Spirit up, moving in our lives. Now, you've, if you've been here for any length of time, you've probably heard me use this analogy of how do you make chocolate milk. And I apologize for those of you who have to listen to this again. But I think it's, I think it's an apt analogy. How do you make chocolate milk? Well, you take a glass, you pour the milk into the glass, right? And then you take the, the HS, the Hershey syrup, the Holy Spirit, and you pour it in, and you go... So you pour the chocolate into the, the milk, the Holy Spirit, into the soul. But do you have chocolate milk yet? No. No. You've got to take a spoon and stir it up. So we have to stir up the Holy Spirit into our lives. His Spirit has been given to us, yes, in a powerful way in baptism, in a powerful way through confirmation. But we can allow the Spirit to lay dormant in our lives if we do not stir the Spirit up in our lives. How do we do this? We ask, we beg, Holy Spirit, come move in my life. That We, we look and we say, how can I live more Spirit-filled life? How can I listen to where God is leading me? How can I live this out? And we look maybe at you know the gifts and the power and the fruit of the Holy Spirit that God pours into our lives. Say, okay, I want to exercise these gifts that God has given to us. And I think one of the powerful gifts that God has given to us, a, a companion on the way, as it were, is our guardian angel. Tomorrow... October 2nd is the traditional feast of the guardian angels. But we're not celebrating it this weekend because when it falls on a Sunday, then the Sunday takes precedence, so we do all that. But it is still the feast of the guardian angels, and it's a good reminder that we have an angel with us, at least one. And this guardian angel has been assigned to you from before you were born and doesn't get recycled it's not like, well, this was also the guardian angel of someone who lived a thousand years ago. No, this angel has been uniquely given to guide you and no one else in your life. Just to clarify a little bit of a catechesis, sometimes we get confused and we say, well, when somebody dies who was maybe a, a child or, or someone that we love so much and we say, well, that's my angel in heaven. Well, that's a nice little sentiment, but people, human beings never become angels. I want to make sure that's clear. We never become an angel. An angel has existed far longer than any human being and has never had a body. We are human beings, not angelic beings. We're both children of Almighty God both of them have been given free will, but we're completely different. So if someone comes to you and says, oh, you're an angel, you need to correct them immediately and say, no, I am a human being with a body and soul who has not existed from all time. You've got to make sure that you clarify that there, because otherwise you're going to have to call them a heretic. No, I'm just kidding. You don't do that. <laughs> but we recognize that these angels have been given to us, and they are given to us not as a nice little cuddly thing to, to walk with us. They have spiritual power. The angels have incredible spiritual power, so much so that if God commanded your guardian angel, your angel could destroy the whole physical universe like that because God commanded it. We're not talking about a nice little, oh, cherub thing living on little wings. But that guardian angel has power and authority to protect and to lead us towards God. The problem is, the problem is, very often we don't listen to our angels who are trying to lead us to the heart of God. And our guardian angel, like God himself, will not step on our free will. If we choose to do something, He's going to lead us. He's going to say, no, don't do that. And stir up our conscience and say, no, this is the wrong direction. But ultimately, we can make the choice and say, I'd rather do this than listen to God. But our guardian angels are there and they can help us. 
They can help us to stir up the Holy Spirit within us. They can help us to say, okay, I need God moving in my life so that I don't have cowardice, that that I'm not mired in fear, but I have that spirit moving in my life of power and love and self-control. So I invite you to pray to your guardian angel. If you don't do this, to pray your guardian angel prayer every day. You know the guardian angel prayer. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here. You know that prayer. Uh, to, To pray and ask your guardian angel to walk with you every day. You know, and another prayer of the angels from the scripture, which we hear about in um, in the book of Isaiah and the book of Revelation, we pray at Mass. In fact, Stephen Manya will be leading us in this prayer in just a short little while. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And if you listen carefully, in the preface, which we pray just before, which I pray, just before we get to that part, it says, you know, like something along the lines of, you know, we get to join in with the angels and archangels, and sometimes it says thrones and dominions and powers and authorities. Sometimes it says all that, but certainly with the angels and saints and praising our God as we proclaim, holy, holy, holy. (laughs) For those of you who are old enough, You remember those times when we'd be watching TV and then there'd be something else that would come on, like the president or something like that. And then at the end of it, they'd say, okay, and now back to your, back to the regularly scheduled program already in progress, right? You remember that? That's what we're doing. Already that praise of God is in progress in heaven. And we're jumping in with the angels and the saints in praising our God. And so this prayer, the the Sanctus, the Holy, Holy Prayer, is a prayer that we can pray not to our angels, but with our angels in praise of Almighty God. And I found this to be a very powerful prayer in my life. And when people ask for me to intercede for them, when people come to me and say, Father Vaughn, can you please pray for this situation or that situation or the other? Very often, my go-to prayer is the Holy, Holy crying out on the guardian angels to go, to guide, protect, to lead. And you know what? I usually see good results with that. God taking care of us through our angels. I invite you to ask your angel to help to stir up that spirit, to fan into flame the Holy Spirit in your life so that you may listen more carefully to where our God is leading you, how he wants you to act, how he wants you to live, how he wants you to become the best version of yourself, to break us from the fear that we may have, the cowardice that may living in our, be living in our lives so that we may have that spirit of power and love and self-control. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our faith, which allows us to do things we can hardly imagine, assures us that the Lord hears our prayers. Therefore, with great confidence, we bring our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers before the Lord. For the Church, that our faith may inspire us to work for justice, to serve those in need, and to care for God's creation, even when the problems seem impossible to uproot and impervious to change, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil authorities here and around the world, that they may work toward creating a society that respects and protects life from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by the power of the Holy Spirit, every Catholic called to the priesthood and consecrated life will guard the treasure of their unique vocation in Christ and fan into flame their love for him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Jewish brothers and sisters, as they observe Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, this week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That our parish may be a model of faith, inspiring us all to put our trust in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Ron Walsh and Philip LeBranch, and for all our beloved deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the prayers of this assembly and for all the prayers written in our parish book of intercessions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of peace, grant us the faith to trust in you in the midst of discord and destruction. Help us to promote the values of peace and life instead. Hear this in all the prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me be your servant, let me walk your way. Guide me on your path, give night the light of day. Let me be a sure foundation, pure and strong. Let me tell of your salvation all life long. Give me ears to listen. Give me words to speak and show your face to me. In silence when you call me, let me hear your voice. Jesus, walk beside me, let my soul rejoice. When winds and currents batter me, help me be sure. Give me courage from the storms when they occur. Give me ears to listen, give me eyes to see. Give me words to speak and show your face to me. Last night when I awoke, I heard you call my name. You refreshed my soul, I felt your burn. Oh, strengthen me to bear my cross and walk your way. Give me grace to comfort those with all I say. Give me ears to listen, give me eyes 
to see. Give me words to speak and show your face to me. Let me be your servant. Let me walk your way. Guide me on your path. Give night the light of day. Let me be a sure foundation, pure and strong. Let me tell of your salvation all night long. Give me ears to listen. Give me eyes to see. Give me words to speak and show your face to me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and to drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the sins of the 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So, as I've mentioned before, we're in the midst of the season of creation. This ends on Tuesday, this liturgical season of creation. And so, Monday evening, on the vigil of that, we will be having a Mass to close the season of creation at 7 p.m. here in the church. On Tuesday evening, we'll be having our monthly Holy Hour for Life. Uh, that's from 6 to 7 here in the church. Also on Tuesday evening, the Women's Guild meeting uh, will be held at 6.30 p.m. and is having author Barbara Miles give a talk of the history of Catholics in New Hampshire, and uh, all are welcome to attend. This Friday is First Friday, and so we have Mass at 8 a.m. Also uh, on Saturday, Men of St. Joseph will be meeting uh, from 7 to 9 a.m., and all men, uh, all Catholic men, are invited to join us. We start here in the church, and then we move over to the parish center. We have breakfast as part of it and good discussion. Uh, as I've been talking about for the last few weeks, we've started our rosary challenge for the month of October. It's, it's not too late to get in on this. And so for each rosary a member of your family prays, you can add a star to Mary's mant mantle at the back of the church. Some of the stars are already up there already. And you can check the bulletin for more information about that. Uh, and then we also have our Light of the World retreat, which is coming up in just a few weeks. And so I'm inviting now Jenna Costa to come forward and share a little bit about her experience at Light of the World. Good afternoon. My name is Jenna Costa, and I'm so happy to talk to you today about something that changed the course of my faith life forever. That may seem like a bit of an exaggeration, but it is truly amazing how this one weekend changed my life. Let me rewind. A few years ago, Stuart Robertson stood up here and talked about a retreat he called Light of the World. Now, as a mom of two little ones, my ears immediately perked up at the word retreat. Now that sounded like something I would be interested in. As he spoke, though, I could see the joy in his face and thought there might just be something to this so-called retreat. I don't remember exactly how it was described, but that evening I knew I wanted to sign up. I did just that, but of course, COVID happened. A year or so went by and I never forgot about Stuart's talk. Finally, as the world started to return to a somewhat normal state, the opportunity opened up again. As this last February came closer, I didn't know what to expect. I had never been to a religious or a Catholic retreat before. I went to Mass when it was convenient, but that's about it. I certainly wasn't one of the perfect Catholics that I thought everyone else sitting here must be. I was just a mom who listened to the nudge she felt to explore her faith more. To say I was insecure about where I was in my Catholic journey was an understatement. Thankfully, I followed that nudge to attend the retreat and didn't let my fear or insecurities hold me back. The Light of the World retreat was so much more than I could have anticipated. I got to listen to stories about other parishioners' faith journeys that were inspiring and were relatable, and many that totally humbled me. The food was amazing, as were the snacks. I loved the quiet time to reflect in adoration and the sense of community and warmth that, that greeted us every day. We talked, laughed, sang, and sometimes shed a few tears, but the support was like nothing else I had experienced before. More than anything, my faith journey completely shifted after this retreat, for the better. I found myself craving more and more of all our Catholic faith has to offer. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to finally put my faith first because I knew it would only lead to the best places. I'm finding this is proving to be true. I was also gifted with the most faith-filled, loving, warm community that I had always wanted to enjoy this journey with but didn't know existed. This is all to say that if you've considered attending this retreat in the past, 
Maybe you're curious or you just felt the same nudge I did to dive into your faith a little bit deeper. I urge you to commit to this weekend with an open heart. God meets us wherever we are. We don't need to know the ins and outs of the Bible or every feast day or have memorized scripture. We don't need to be a perfect Catholic, although I'm beginning to learn there is no such thing. (laughs) If we take a step forward with an open heart, Jesus is happy to meet us and take over from there. I hope to see you all at at our Light of the World retreat in October. I will add, this retreat is right here at the St. Pat's School. It's October 21st through October 24th. It's a Friday, a Saturday, a Friday night, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and Monday evening. You can sleep at home. Food is provided, and I don't know if you heard me, but it's really, really good. Um, We are going to have people at the back and um, the front of the church. Um, You can register with our parish office or as you leave today. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to call the parish office or ask Will Thasier. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jenna. You you may or may not know this, but the... um Number one fear in America is public speaking, even more than death. So when someone's giving a eulogy at a funeral, for instance, most of the people in that church would rather be the person in the casket than the person (laughs) up there. And so um, for not only Jenna giving this witness today, but even all the the people who are part of the light of the world giving talks, this is a very nerve-wracking experience for many of them who are not trained public speakers, and yet God moves through them in powerful ways, sharing their stories, sharing their lives, and drawing us deeper into the mystery of God's love. It's a powerful experience, so I strongly encourage you to come and join us on this great weekend. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us in singing the song that sends us forth, number 610, Let All Things Now Living, number 610. Let all things now living a song of thanksgiving To God our Creator triumphantly raise Who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us By guiding us on to the end of our days God's banners are o'er us, pure light goes before us a pillar of air shining forth in the night Till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished As forward we travel from light into light His law he enforces, the stars in their courses The sun in its orbit obediently shine The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the depths of the ocean proclaim God divine. We too should be voicing our love.